everybody. Okay, so today's video is a little bit different. I have my coach, Adam Bonilla from Team Elite Physique here to help me explain and guide you guys on a question I get more than anything. Ever since I posted that video saying I was dealing with some thyroid issues, I got so many messages from girls saying, oh my gosh, I think I might have some thyroid issues too. I'm unable to lose weight. I'm dieting so hard, nothing's happening. You know, what were the symptoms? How did you correct this issue? And let me just start off by saying, I think a lot of times people will jump the gun and think that they're having thyroid issues if they can't lose weight. But in reality, it could be so many other things. It could be just the wrong diet or maybe they're taking in more colors than they realize or their training isn't on point. But I think it's both, from both of us, it's pretty safe to say, it's something you need to get tested. I Absolutely, mean, regardless, yeah. it's it's nice to know like your hormone levels. Just get everything tested because you never know. I mean, even I was lacking iron in my blood, which made me anemic, which caused other issues as well. So, always, 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 when you start a prep, it's nice to know these things. Get your blood work done. Yeah. We kind of say looking under the hood. So you can have a, a beautiful car, a nice Ferrari on the outside, and then you look under the hood and you have a you know really crappy engine on the inside. So it's good to know you know what's running the car. And with Ashley, we found we we're starting our prep and we knew that her, her metabolism was adapted. And there's a big difference between metabolism being adapted and having a low thyroid. You know, people automatically assume, oh, my thyroid is not working if I'm not losing losing weight. Well, there's a lot of different reasons that you can have slow weight loss progress or fat loss progress. And so we decided a couple months into it that it wasn't working the way we thought it was. So we saw a doctor, um, we actually saw Dr. Ramos, who's like a specialist for FitMD, who always takes care of our people. And we found out that she was anemic, she had low thyroid levels. And um, you know, under, after that, we got under doctor supervision of her monitoring her thyroid and it really helped out. So I think one of the more important things to take from this is like, what is metabolism? Why can you be not losing weight? And that it, thyroid is not the number one reason for that. More times than not, especially people who are going real aggressive with losing body fat, like maybe in the contest prep world or wherever you're doing like modeling world and you're trying to get really lean, if you eat low calories for a long time, there's this thing called adaptive thermogenesis where your body will actually burn less calories in adaption to the low amount of calories that you're giving it. A lot of times more common than, than the thyroid issue. So never just, never assume that. Um, if you want to figure it out, you have to get it tested, so. Absolutely, and I think like, it's it's super important like regardless even if you aren't necessarily experiencing issues yet it's good to know because you never know and things might creep up and then bite you in the butt in the future so so another part of the question i've been getting a lot was how did you suspect that you have a slow thyroid and you know honestly i didn't think right away that's what it was but it makes sense after the fact and i was experiencing obviously extremely slow weight loss i stayed at 134 pounds for a long time i, I had some hair loss too but that could have also been because of the anemia as well i got cold a lot some of the common symptoms of hypothyroidism, which means slow thyroid. And am I missing any that somebody else might experience? Um, your nails. Your Na nails oh, my off. nails were very brittle. Um, yes. So I have it pulled up right here just so you guys can see. But basically, people who you feel cold all the time, constipated, dry skinned, unexplained weight gain. For her, it was her nails, her hair. One day she was like, you know, my hair just really doesn't grow that much. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, I don't cut it very often. And it's always about the same length. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we need to get tested. And then she flew into Denver and we worked with the, a specialist and they figured figured a whole bunch of things out, which as soon as we got that figured out, I mean, things were still never really like easy, easy or anything like that, but it, it helped it work. It helped a lot more, so. And I'm glad I found out, you know, sooner than later because I, I believe it only gets worse from that point. And let me just stress to you, I wouldn't say I had like a severe case. It's not like a, oh my gosh, feel sorry for me. Am I condition so bad it was a light case I want to say but for the sport that I do which is you know trying to get lean and in the best shape possible it really kind of affected you know my my sport my competition and just my contest prep shape so it was meaningful for me to really get it fixed and I'm so glad that I did and thank you for suggesting this because honestly I even my coach in the past I would not have gotten that done ever I wouldn't kind of thought to get my blood to work done and it's not something that really crossed my mind because I'm still young and it's not something young people tend to do is get a you know blood work so yeah. I'm glad that she had that done for yeah, me abs Good stuff. absolutely and one of the things I think it's really important to talk about when we talk about these uh, like metabolism 
people oftentimes think metabolism is a digestive thing. Like they think, oh, like there's something in your body burning calories and it's digestive based. And everyone kind of thinks that, but really metabolism is the body's chemical response within the tissues of the body. So hormones is part of that. So your metabolism isn't something in, inside of you just eating calories up and burning. It's a chemical response within the cells and that response is based on hormones. So if you have low testosterone, you have low thyroid, these things like that, they do affect metabolism greatly because that's part of the chemical process of it attacking it. So um, one of the main things that affects your metabolism is going to be your food consumption though. It's too low of calories, too much cardio is going to slow, lower your metabolism. And that's when you see these people who do shows and they have these rapid rebounds after the shows, they gain 20, 30 pounds or they're getting ready for a photo shoot and they gain back 20, 30 pounds is because a lot of times they didn't take the right approach to their diet and when they came off the diet and just started eating regular again, they had this extremely adapted metabolism. Doesn't mean it was a thyroid issue, it just means your metabolism adapted. So we try to do things in a, I guess you say, healthier way for this approach that we do. We never go Scientific. too low in calories. <laughs> yeah, we use an evidence-based approach and um, never go too low in calories, never go too high in cardio, keep it healthy and safe and you know she looks great with it so it's working great so adam you kind of touched on it a little bit but just explain again out there what are some good measures that you can take as a competitor or somebody that maybe diets a lot to prevent from getting a slow or inactive thyroid you mentioned you have a term it's not reverse dieting but yeah, it's adaptive ad thermogenesis yeah so what what adaptive thermogenesis is it's your body's way of surviving through low calories and I hope I don't get too technical here but there's this thing called NEAT which is non-exercise activity induced thermogenesis which basically means if you're you're gonna when you start dieting hard your body starts moving slower and uh, with the non-exercise activity and induced thermogenesis um, it means that you're just not doing the things you're normally doing you're more tired you're not walking around as much you're not cleaning the house things like that your body's trying to preserve calories so if you diet too hard, your metabolism will adapt, okay, if you're dieting too hard. So the main thing I would say is work with someone who has an education in this. Even if you're just doing it yourself, do your own research and never just dive into these low calories and high cardio. That's going to create too big of a deficit, which causes a major adaption. And crash dieting, never do it. Never that's never good. It. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people do in, like yes. when they're getting ready for photo shoots or their Instagram or just con contest prep. You'll see someone who's really healthy, who looks pretty good, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I'm going to get ready for something and then they already looked pretty good and then they think they need to go through these drastic measures of cutting their calories way down and doing a ton of cardio to look lean and really you don't need to do that you just need to lose a little bit of body fat every single week we try to lose one to one and a half pounds for females one and a half pounds to two pounds for for larger males and that's it anything more than that you start losing muscle your metabolism starts adapting too quickly and there's just no need for it there's no reason for it so take your time not just your prep is good but out when you finish your prep you're not gaining back a lot of weight because you hurt your body too much very sensitive time after a show it's very you got to be very careful you can have your cheat meal but after that, you, you guys start getting back on it, then yeah. slowly adding the calories and work your way into the off season. Because off season, just as important as in season, and that's where most of your improvements are going to be made is in the off season. I think that you, you nailed it on the head there. Um, the Im improvements, so I like, I like in season and I like improvement season. I don't like off season words because everything that positive happens, happens in the improvement season. So. A lot of people in the contest world or fitness world spend time getting their outside buff, but they never spend time getting their insides buff. And I think that we spent time this year getting your insides buff yes. and everything's running full speed now. Mm -hmm. And now we're just cruising through shows and we're able to have a little bit more freedom because her insides are buff. You know, her metabolism is fast. It's not as adapted now. It's still semi-adapted because we are in prep. Um, and then when we come out of this show, we're going to be able to raise calories right up to maintenance calories. Mm -hmm. She's not going to gain back a ton of weight, probably going to gain like one to two pounds. It's going to be nothing to nothing hard to get off of. So spend time in the off season getting your metabolism up to what we call metabolic capacity. So that means your full speed of your metabolism. That way, when you start prep again, you're, it's an easy prep for you to do. So stay lean, get your metabolism high, don't be afraid to eat calories, and just be smart and make sure that your next prep is really, really easy. Awesome, I like that motto. And uh, yeah, I just wanna thank you again, Adam, for helping me throughout this prep. And I also wanna thank FitMD for you know being part of that process as well. And guys, as you know, it was a long prep for me when I prepped for my Denver show. It took over six months of prep. Thyroid is finally regulated. We're good to go. Yeah. Got to, just got to be careful now and be <laughs> smart about things and yeah. just coast on to the next show. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate 
every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye!